Welcome to UK Business Show, UK's premier business show where we feature business thought leaders, high achievers, and industry experts. Today's episode is brought to you by World Outsourcing Solutions Limited, a company that specializes in helping executive business owners with virtual assistant services and business growth systems. Here's your host, UK Kachidori. Hi, and welcome back to a very special episode. And as always, I'm delighted to bring you one of the experts that I think will be able to help you. Now, before I bring Ken on right at at this time, uh, a few weeks ago, somebody said, you know, all these marketing strategies you share with us, some of them works for different type of businesses, but we want people that can help the local business individuals. So that's the reason we have Ken Tucker here on the show so if you run a local business like a a brick and mortar business you want to stay tuned in today's show because ken has been helping businesses like yours over the last 15 years ken thank you so much for joining us on the show yeah thank you very much i'm excited to be here it's wonderful that you can join us and now i know some people are very excited about uh, the you know having you here today but they have never come across your work and could you give us just a brief intro to who is ken and how he ended up helping local businesses and so thank you yeah yeah absolutely so yeah my name's ken tucker with uh, changescape web it's a company that i founded 15 years ago i'm the chief marketing strategist for the company And we focus on working with local businesses, whether it's a brick and mortar business, as you said, uh, service area business, meaning, you know, a plumber or a roofer who goes and serves customers in a local geographic area or professional services businesses like uh, accountants and attorneys uh, and, you know, things like that. Um, I I, I got into this business um, a little bit by accident. Uh, I, I started out in the IT world and uh, created IT solutions. And uh, I did that for um, you know a, a long time. It helped me really build a, a, a good systematic view of the way to look at things and a big picture strategy. And, um, and then the company I work for asked me to get involved in doing some marketing. So we actually created a marketing department because I was doing a lot of proposal heavy work um, you know, with uh, large corporations or the U.S. federal government at the time. And so uh, we wanted to have a set of marketing assets that we could use over and over and over again and systematize the process. And um, so I, I decided to leave that company and start my own company. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and so uh, I, I still kept the IT uh, part of my business around for three years until um, 2008, at which point we just decided we loved the whole world of digital marketing, the direction it was going, the accountability of it. And so um, that's really what we've been focused on ever since. I've had an opportunity to write a couple of different books, uh, actually three, uh, one on social media marketing for restaurants, one for on reputation management. And the latest book we wrote, which got the bestseller list on Amazon, is called Content Marketing for Local Search. And so we really wrote that book because um, we, we wanted to give not only our customers, but all small businesses owners out there an opportunity to understand, you know, what it really takes to help win in search, search engine optimization. And a content strategy is absolutely key. Yes, we are excited that we'll be talking about the content marketing strategy towards the end uh, of uh, this episode. But uh, you use a very interesting strategy, uh, the duct tape strategy when it comes to marketing. Tell us about that. Yeah, so the duct tape marketing um, system is basically, it it focuses on marketing strategy first. Um, Too many businesses rush to tactics and they do um, fragmented uh, marketing efforts I won't even say that they're campaigns because, you know, you might send a postcard out one time to a set of people, don't get any results, get frustrated, decide you're going to go try something else. There's no integration there. There's no strategic thinking there. And so uh, a lot of businesses, I think, waste a lot of money doing that. What I like about the duct tape marketing system is we really focus on clarity of message, on identifying who your ideal customers are. Uh, that's so critical to, to you know for your targeting uh, and your messaging 
um, you know, competitive analysis. What are your competitors doing? Uh, you know, that and, and maybe why are they succeeding where you're not? And then, you know, obviously focusing in on developing what the core difference uh, is for your business. What is your core differentiation, if you will? Uh, and then the next thing I love about the duct tape marketing system is we use this concept called the marketing hourglass. Yes. So now before we it, go to the marketing hourglass there, okay. Ken, sorry to interrupt you. Uh, no worries. We wanted to point out the importance of a strategy-based marketing because if I had not met somebody like you when we were doing, I would still be struggling as of today with our marketing because when you get started often, you just want to go out uh, and put your, you know, your word out. So you were trying constantly everything, literally, uh, and yeah. I did that, but there was a lot of frustration along the way because I would try someone rightly, you've said, uh, and if he doesn't produce results in three weeks' time, I would say it's not working anymore. Let's try another one. And after a year or maybe close to two years, I discovered that I was doing everything, but I wasn't measuring exactly where I was getting maximum uh, return on investment. I'm sure okay. he you identify to that. And yeah. I got a mentor like yourself who said, come on, let's let's uh, sit down. Let's look at this. You are doing a lot of tactical approach. Uh, what do you want? What are you trying to achieve? What are the things that you can do consistently over a period of time and begin to get the results that you want? And yeah. I just wanted to point that out. Has that been the case with some of your customers? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Nobody wants to pay for strategy, you know, because they want to get to the results. They want to, they want to jump way ahead. Um, and, and in some cases, you know, we always try to work that delicate balance. I mean, we always try to find some low hanging fruit to drive some immediate business results, uh, you know, that, that turn into paying customers. But at the same time, you're going to save yourself a lot of grief and a lot of money if you spend time you know, not everybody on um, you know who can find your business is the right customer for you. Uh, any business owner that's been around for for a while knows that there are certain customers that really aren't very good customers for them. Even right. though they're giving them money, they're not they're not the best customers. They're they either uh, they're time consuming, they're low profit. Uh, you know, there are a variety of of different things. So it's really important to figure out who do you want to work with. Who are your ideal customers? How do you find them? Um, you know, and that's where you want to make your investment in your marketing dollars, whether it's the language you use to reach those those folks. When they land on your website, it's going to resonate with them, which means that they're going to stay on your website, call your business or fill out a form online. Um, it's just so critical. Absolutely. It's incredible because when you know your ideal client, by knowing them is really knowing what makes them tick, what are their pain points, what uh, you know, what is it that they truly want right now. It helps you to create better messaging to them, which if yeah. you haven't taken time to do that, uh, you'll be firing, you know, what they call, you know, throwing mud to the wall, hoping that, you know, some of it will stick. Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, you know, when you're trying to do search engine optimization, you cannot do it effectively unless you focus on the problems that you solve for your customers. You know, with the, you know, with smart speakers, you know, um, and, and smartphones, people are now asking questions when they're doing searches. And that's, that behavior is different than, you know, when people used to do a search just on a desktop. Uh, while they may still have typed in a, a question, they may have only typed in really a core phrase and so it's it's really important uh, if your business is relying on people finding you uh, by doing searches, uh, you, you've got to focus on the problems that they have. And then you've got to speak to them in language that they understand, not use your terminology, you know, because that, that may not make any sense to them. You know, when you use, uh, for example, painters, when you talk to a painter, they always talk about doing a lot of repaints. That is not a search phrase that somebody types in when they're looking for somebody to come and paint their house. So if you're trying, you know, if all of the language about what you do on your website is about repaint, 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 that's not going to resonate with, uh, with your ideal customers. Yes. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the next stage of uh, the duct tech uh, method. Yeah. Yeah. So the marketing hourglass, 
uh, is basically a different way to think about this concept that many of the listeners uh, may have heard of called uh, a sales funnel. And so the marketing hourglass um, really has seven stages to it. It's no like, and trust, which is really common in the, the language of almost any, anybody who, who talks about marketing. Um, you know, people have to know you, they have to like you, and then they have to trust you before they're ready to buy from you. Sure. Um, what duct tape did is, you know, in this book, this is a book that was uh, written uh, 2008, 2009 timeframe. And, um, you know, at the time the internet was just exploding. And so this idea of um, you know, a try offer, you know, to get somebody to make a small purchase or uh, maybe not even a purchase, but an investment or a commitment with your business to try what it was like working with your business it could be listening to a podcast. It could be watching a webinar, it could be downloading an ebook or a checklist from somebody's website. It could be buying a trial version of a product for $7 or $79 or something like that. Um, but that try stage has been a really important uh, concept, you know, in, in the world of uh, online marketing. Uh, but then once they, once they buy, once they try that and then they, they buy and they become a full customer, um, what I love about the duct tape marketing system with the marketing hourglass is the sale doesn't isn't the end. You want to you want to have repeat and refer are the final two stages. So no like trust, try by repeat and refer and repeat means, you know, getting your customers to come back and buy more often or buy different products. Yeah. Uh, and if they, you know, and, and there's gold, especially in this time, there is so much gold in your existing and past customer list that uh, you want to go back and reactivate those customers who have been customer of your, customers of yours because you've already removed those barriers of the know, like, and trust. They already know who you are. They already like you and they already trust you. Um, get them to come back and buy again from you. And then the final thing is get them to refer you. Referral marketing, you know, is usually the best strategy a business can get. You know, and, and so writing a review about your business online. Uh, whether it be a Google review, a Yelp review, a local website that has reviews, uh, any review is great. And then also referring you, um, you know, and, and create maybe even considering putting together a formal referral program. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're, if you're, you know, again, we'll use the example of a house painter. If you're a house painter, maybe you work out a program with an interior designer and give them an incentive where anytime they refer a customer to you, um, you know, then you can reward them in some way. And it doesn't have to be monetary. I mean, you can make a contribution to the local charity, uh, you know, or, or something like that. Outstanding. Outstanding. Let's uh, help uh, people on maybe the necessary steps that they may apply right now. We could choose maybe from, uh, you know, the strategization, what they, uh, what they need to be thinking about when coming up with a strategy on marketing. Or we could look at uh, the glass, the, the marketing gla uh, hourglass. Uh, you know, one of those things that you know, our listeners can actually put to practice today. Yeah. Um, so I think strategy is really important, and so you know, we we run through people through a process where we do competitive research. We look at their competitors. Um, we interview s some of their past customers to find out what is the core difference. And, and why did they decide to hire that business? And so I think any business can go through that process, whether, you know, and it may be awkward for you to call and interview your customers and ask them to get that information. So you might want to hire a third party uh, to do that, you know, uh, whether it be a marketing consultant or somebody like that. It needs to be professionally done, um, but ask your customers uh, why they decided to do business with you and why they like doing business with you. And I think that's going to help you uncover a lot of, things that you can use to, to build into your core message about why your business is different. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, every, when you start out asking everybody what makes you different, it's like, oh, well, we provide great customer service. Yeah. Well, a lot of businesses can say that. Um, and, and then you can even formalize it a little bit if you wanted to, where you could take it and you could build out, you know, a 12 point quality program that you offer or, a guarantee, you know, a, a five point guarantee. If we don't do this, 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 and this, you know, then we'll give you your money back or something like that. And that, I know that can be really scary for a lot of businesses, 
but um, but but it also is an incredibly powerful way to differentiate yourself in the marketplace because now you have uh, something that's different. I, I love uh, also StoryBrand. I'm not I'm not sure if you're familiar with StoryBrand by Donald Miller, but yes, uh, yeah, a, a, a excellent book. That that'd be one of the first books I would recommend anybody who wants to improve their marketing. Go read that book or listen to the audio book. It's a really easy book to digest. But, you know, what um, What he talks about, you know, is uh, moving people using story as, as the way to kind of think about marketing. And so you have a, a customer who has a problem. Uh, they're looking for a guide, which would be the business, who has uh, a plan of action uh, that, uh, that or, or, or a plan, basically, that can call them to action to either achieve success or avoid failure. And that's the way we've communicated for millennia, you know, as human beings. And so when you have that, that defined on your website, that really makes it easy for people to consume your website. And honestly, um, still most businesses don't think about communicating that way. And, and so if you do that, uh, you're going to have, uh, I think, a real leg up. Yes. Yeah. You know, one of the things that uh, has just sprung to mind when you were talking about that is uh, the whole experience of asking your customer. I had to do that, you know, uh, for my business show. So I sent out an email to uh, all our, our guests and to our listeners uh, so that I can fine tune how we do things. So the first email that went to our guest was, uh, why did you choose to be uh, why did you opt out to be on my guest? So they gave uh, very good answers. Some of them were very, very good. Uh, and uh, I then asked my listeners why they keep coming back. Uh, and from that exercise, uh, we have streamlined our onboarding process. You probably have experienced that as well uh, from creating with with my assistant, it was a direct result of uh, the survey that we did uh, with, gosh, over 300 of guests that we've had on the show. They told us what they didn't like. They told us, you know, what made it even simpler. And we're still working on that. So it's uh, an ongoing process. Absolutely. Marketing is ongoing. That's another key point. Don't realize that, uh, I mean, don't think that just because you build a website, even if you get it to rank, that's that that doesn't end what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Google changes its algorithms. Competitors continue to make investments. Um, you know, so it, it, it's really important. Marketing is an ongoing thing, and it is fundamentally a system. And too many businesses don't think about marketing as a system. You've got an accounting system. You've got a customer service system that you've probably put. You've probably got a project management type of a system uh, in in place for many businesses. But most businesses don't have a marketing system, and yet that's what's going to fuel the income and the revenue coming into the business to support everything else that you do. So marketing is a system. It doesn't stop. You have to keep going, and you have to keep working on it and improving it and tweaking it as you go. Absolutely, absolutely. If you don't, you know, <laughs> uh, find you'll be say, you know, you'll be left behind. Again, you might get lucky, but yeah, most of the time you're going to be left behind. Yes, yeah, but you know, a marketing system will also assures you that you have the right things in place. It's not haphazard; it's streamlined, and you know exactly what you're going to get out of it. It's worth yeah. investing into it. Absolutely, and it's fundamental to scale. You know, you've got to if you're trying to grow your business, you've got to think about what are the things that you need to have in place to help you scale. And you know, coming from a solutions background, you know, in the in the information technology space. You know, it, it really helped me to understand that, you know, there's an opportunity, you know, if you systematize your processes so that it's the same every time and, and it makes it easy for people to learn and nothing falls through the cracks. Um, if you simplify the delivery of how you do things, it gives you the ability to sell it over and over and over again um, and, and just in, increase your profit margin without substantially having to increase the uh, the investments that you need to make to to grow that scale. So, uh, you know, marketing is is fundamental to that. But you know, as a, as are any other systems that a business might need to have in place. 
Absolutely the truth. And all successful businesses have got marketing systems in place. You know, that will tell you exactly, you know, why you need to consider having a marketing system in place. And specifically to have a strategy, uh, you know, in place, not haphazard, but something that you know that we are doing this because we want this particular result in three months' time or in a defined period of time in advance. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's talk about the mindset of uh, anyone who is looking to get uh, a considerable great result in their marketing effort, for specifically for the local business owners. Okay. Yeah, I, I think the mindset, um, the first thing I would say is the most effective way that I know how to market is to look at really an integrated set of things working together to, to amplify a force multiplier, if you will, um, where, you know, if you do just Facebook uh, and that's your only marketing channel um, and you're not doing, you know, something like on Google My Business uh, for local businesses is so critical, or you're sending out a postcard, but the postcard you send out doesn't align with what you're doing on your Facebook page and, and how you're trying to market yourself on Facebook, you're, you're missing a huge opportunity. You can, if you if you can pull these different tactics together, there's really almost always a great amplification effect. And I think the best way to explain that is really the way I look at search engine optimization. When people talk about search engine optimization, they usually think about you know these concepts of on page and off page SEO and link building and all this kind of stuff. Mm. You know, and and so well, yeah, those are components of what you do from a search search engine optimization perspective, you know, it, every time you do a, a blog post, you should put that out there on Facebook. Mm. Um, so but because a blog post is one of the best ways that you can build content that, can, that other people might want to build links to. And it's also great content for people who are visiting your website to understand how you might be able to solve their problems. It gives Google more content to help your website rank for particular sets of keyword phrases and things like that. But if you just take the simple step of taking that blog post and putting it out there on Facebook so that you get, you use the power of Facebook to get that blog post out there in front of a lot of other people mm -hmm. uh, who might start to share it around, you know, and, and dr dramatically increase the reach uh, just because you posted it out there uh, it has a huge amplifying effect. So while, Facebook isn't necessarily an SEO strategy. The social signals that you get from content that you put on Facebook and how it's shared out and how many engagements you get and how many shares you get is a signal for search engine optimization. So, you know, it's a combination of content that you create. It's a combination of doing social media, uh, obviously um, review sites, you know, uh, reputation management is really critical to search engine optimization because it addresses that trust aspect. Um, and then, you know, making sure your business is listed in all of the business directory listings in a consistent way where you don't have any bad data flowing out, uh, floating out there uh, talking about, you know, um, where your business is located or, your, you know, inconsistent phone numbers. That, that's a killer for businesses. Even business hours can be a killer for businesses, especially in the age of, of COVID-19. If you're not keeping your information up to date with the actual hours that you have, people might go to your business at a time when you used to be open and you didn't change any, like your Google My Business page or, or a local directory page, uh, and they go there and they see that you're closed. They may think you're completely closed and not open at all. Yeah. And they may never go back and give you another opportunity. So um, all of that ties in together and, you know, and an and, and integrated strategy, I think, is really important. So realize that um, unless you're a pretty small operation, you might be able, successful just using a single channel, but really, you know, focus on an integrated strategy and an integrated set of tactics. Outstanding. Absolutely outstanding. Well, Ken, as we come toward the end of our time together, you know, we want to uh, our listeners to be able to learn further with you. Where can we send them to? Okay. Yeah. So, uh, um, really, a couple of different things. One is um, my website is changescapeweb.com. So that's C H A N G E S C A P E W E B.com. 
Uh, and the second thing is, we have uh, I, I work with a couple of other marketing consultants. We've recently launched our own podcast called The Marketing Guides for Small Businesses. Brilliant. And so you can find that um, on uh, pretty much any of the uh, podcast platforms that are out there, um, you know, Apple, Google, Spotify, um, Stitcher. There's quite a few of those ones, yes. Uh, yeah, there are. Yeah, so that's brilliant. Uh, we always like to end with uh, talking to Ken, the business owner. You know, what makes you keep going despite all the criticism, perhaps sometimes even the uh, the difficulty that comes with running a business? Yeah, you know, um, it's always hard to put yourself out there. You know, and um, when, when I... Especially in 2008, 2009, when the economy in the U.S. was not very good, um, a lot of people would hire us to do very small things. And, you know, as many business owners have been, you know, whether it was in that economy or for a variety of reasons, a lot of times you just need to take the business that kind of falls into your lap, whether it's the right business or not. Mm -hmm. um, I learned pretty quickly that that was a mistake because... Um, if all I did was build somebody a website and I did it for a pretty cheap price because they, they couldn't afford to pay any more, um, they, you know, they inevitably they'd come back and they'd say, you built me this, this great website, but it's not doing anything for me. Right. And so, you know, you, you, you learn those criticisms, you kind of take it to heart. And that was my first challenge to say, you know, maybe I shouldn't try to do business with everybody. I really need to be more selective in who I'm working with. And, and when you make that decision, then I think you um, you can transform your business and people will start to look at your business in a different way. If you have an expertise in a niche, you know, when you talk to people in that niche, they automatically trust you and assume that you have a lot of expertise and authority in that niche. And so uh, I think it's really important for every business to kind of dial in what they, what they do. And I, you know, I learned that uh, it took me probably too long to learn that. Um, to be honest with you, but uh, but it's an important lesson I, I think everybody business should uh, consider. Outstanding. Well, thank you so much, uh, Ken, for sharing this uh, great information with us uh, today. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. It was awesome. Thanks. Yes. And there you have it, guys. If you want to learn more about strategic marketing and what you need to be doing to improve what you're getting from your investment in marketing. Ken Tucker is your main man, and there will be a link at the bottom of this recording where you can just click and be taken to uh, Ken's uh, website or to connect uh, with him there. Listen, if you are alone, you're doing it wrong. Business is meant to be done in a community, and you can get more done when you have other people doing the same thing with you. That's why we created the LinkedIn group, so that if you've got any question, you can reach out and we'll be able to help you with that. And also, finally, we've put together our Rolodex of the uh, guests that we get to work with, and you can reach out in the LinkedIn group and ask for that Rolodex, which is a list of our preferred suppliers, uh, and you can have access to them just because you're listening uh, to this uh, podcast. Once again, thank you for joining us, and we wish you the very best until we meet again with another special podcast. Have a great day, and go apply what you've learned today. Ken, have a great day. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening to Ukai Business Show. We will be back to bring you more episodes with success stories and advice straight from the experts. Want more? Check out www.ukaibusinessshow.com. Get your free trial of our virtual assistance service today. Just visit www.worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Quote W O S 1 8 or send us an email at support at worldoutsourcingsolutions.com. Thank you.